All right. Welcome, everyone, to another installment of Things That Keep Me Up at Night podcast. You can see Greg and I are joined by a very dashing gentleman, a staunch supporter, and a very knowledgeable watch collector in his own right, and a father. He's a dad. Congratulations, Man. Bryson. Thank um, you, recent father. Dude, con- dude Mazel Tov. This is awesome. Um, I've known him since i want to say if, if my channel's like five years old at least for four years you've been like on my channel and yeah, it's been he, it's been a few yeah and, and you if you follow me at all on the time teller channel which you probably do you see him during the live streams because he is a moderator at the time teller channel and um yeah he's someone i trust and that's why when i first started this podcast and and, and again we're only like i think this is week two right greg um i was like guys i need some people to talk to i don't want this just to be another live stream where it's me just rambling i'd like to get some interesting topics and i'd like to pull from some people around here who's interested i immediately went to bryson he was like yo 9 11 and i was like okay and here's the thing before we even get into this i just want to say although there might be some humor exchanged through this podcast although we may laugh although we may chuckle here and there i do want to acknowledge how devastating of an event this was how atrocious uh this was how many lives uh it took directly and tangentially from from you know the the conflicts that followed uh if you are I mean, my target demographic, if especially if you're my age, um, you remember life pre 9-11 and post 9-11. And it changed. Even I mean, Greg and I grew up together in Northeast US. We, we, we lived in New England, hop, skip and a jump away from uh, from ground, ground zero. And it even affected, you know, we were pulled in the auditorium just like every other classroom was. We remember being like, what is going on? And our lives just totally changed. So I do want to acknowledge that that we are not trying to make light of this. This is um, probably one of the deeper, if not the deepest topic that, that we will cover on this live stream. Um, so I do want to say, uh, give as much respect because, as I can, because that that is necessary. So Bryson, with that being said, why are you here and, and who are you? Why don't you give yourself a little introduction? So, uh, as Jory said, my name is Bryce, and I am one of the moderators on the T3 channel. Um, I am a run-of-the-mill Midwesterner, born and raised, uh, you know, went to went to Catholic school, um, born to bled the stars and stripes, the whole nine yards. Amen. So, so this is one of the things that, um, apropos of your channel, that keep me up at night is 9-11 and everything surrounding it. Um, I'm 32 years old. I am a real estate agent and, and one of all sales, anything I'll sell. Uh, sometimes it's watches, sometimes it's cars, yeah. sometimes it's houses, it's whatever it is. Like hustler. That is kind hustler. of hustler. Hustler. Love to see hustler, kind of guy. <laughs> That's the thing. Kind of That's what we do. Um, but in addition to, uh, I am also a mild uh, history buff. My my mother was a history teacher, and it's always American history. And it's always kind of uh, been very interesting to me. So naturally, something like this, anything that uh, has a little twang of conspiracy to it, mm-hmm. uh, I'm drawn to. And Especially so in government changing situations like 9-11 was. Life changing. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So here, here's the first question. What got you down the rabbit hole? You you already alluded to the fact that, well, you know, it's, it's kind of in my blood. My mom, history teacher, I'm already right, interested right. in these types of things. But when it comes to 9-11, like, why was it that 9-11 immediately was the first thing when I brought it up to you? Hey, I'm, I'm starting this podcast. I want to talk about conspiracies once in a while. Why was that in the forefront of your mind? What got you down this rabbit hole? You know, I think it's the biggest conspiracy of our generation. If you'd ask our parents, they probably would say JFK assassination. Um, and there's not really been an American conspiracy as great as 9-11 since. Um, mm-hmm. There's been plenty others, 
but this one always stands out, um, especially like you said, since we lived through it, we remember what happened that day. Granted, we were young, mm -hmm. um, but you know, we, I, I remember, like I said, being in Catholic school, I remember them rolling the TV out because for the kids watching, we didn't have TVs yeah. in our classrooms. They, there's one or two for the school, rolled it into our classroom and we watched the second plane hit, uh, which was jarring for, for our age. Um, and then being in a Catholic school, they took us all to the church and we had to pray for of us course, today of course. until our parents yeah. came to collect us. Um, so it's just always something that stood out in my mind. I think something that kind of goes along uh, in line with it in parallel to it is we, uh, we write months before uh, we had a who would you vote for kind of mock election within the class. Mm -hmm. And it was between George Bush and whoever was running at the time. I think it was John Kerry in 2000. Yes. I, I, I may be wrong. It may have been Al Gore. Al Gore. Al Gore. Um, but we had Wasn't a mock his, Oh, my like God. That. I should probably know this. But this is his first term or his second term? It was his first term. I believe it was Al okay, Gore. Okay, so then it was Al Gore. Term. Yeah, then it was Al Gore. So we had this mock election, and we all started kind of paying attention to who those people were and what was going on, who the president was. And then... Months later, 9-11 took place. Mm -hmm. So here, okay. I also want to bring something up. I know, I think in like every podcast that we've had Greg on, uh, and he's going to be on every other podcast because he's the producer here. But uh, I always mention that we grew up together. And what's what's kind of interesting and, and sad and unique is we lived, you know, five hours outside of New York City. And some of the parents of the kids we went to school with worked in the city and um it's 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 insane i mean i remember i heard one kid whose dad literally missed a taxi and so he he wasn't in the world trade center and like that's that's so incredible that 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 you can see how your life would have been literally just ended if you had gotten like into that car. It's, and there's so many stories. There's so many stories like that. Oh, I slept in, I missed the flight. Oh, I did, I did this. And then, um, you know, this, it's like the butterfly effect, you know what I mean? Absolutely. This one thing changed. And then I, I, my life was altered for the better or for the worse. And, and it's just nuts. How, how little, I personally, I don't want to speak for you guys, but I think I was, I think I, I was 11 or 12 during this and how little I actually comprehended it because I remember when we were being rushed into the auditorium, Greg, uh, this kid, Justin Bedford, I don't know if you, if you remember him, but he was like, he was like, yo, but his mom was a, was a teacher's aide. So he kind of got the inside scoop of like the goings on in the school. He was like, yo, I was like, what's going on? And he was like, a plane just hit the World Trade Center. And I, I was like, well, that's crazy. Because I thought that it was like, like one of these little pond jumpers, these little pond skippers that like happened to clip the World Trade. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And then when we were in the auditorium, then the second plane hit. And then, then the teachers went like freaking bananas, right? And me being a dumb little kid, I was like, wow, what, what are the odds? This is absurd. This is, this is crazy. But, but the last that I didn't even understand outside of, you know, like a Chuck Norris film, like Delta force or something. I didn't understand the term terrorist and how, like, that was not in my Rolodex of what I would pull up. So when I heard that not one, but two planes now have hit the World Trade Center, and we didn't even know about the Pentagon, and then right. uh, the one in, in the field. Flight 93, so, right. Right. Uh, I, it's, I didn't even have a bearing to pull up the, the term, like, oh, this is terrorist, this is, in my dumb little kid head, I was like, wow, this is just, something's in the air, I guess. Like, I... I what was, a coinkadink. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know how it was for you, but for me, I didn't initially think terrorism, which is crazy because now, since that point on, that's like the, on the only word that I think has has overtaken terrorism has been like COVID. That's right. that's it. And that's a recent development at the time of filming. So 
so yeah, that it, it changed our jargon. It changed our vocabulary. It changed how we uh, travel. It changed how we look at, at people similar to, to, to COVID, which is probably something we will talk about in, in a, a separate series. Greg's pointing something out. No, just I need to add something here. The word horrific I had never heard in my life. And mm. now whenever I hear it or I, or anything comes close to it, that word is associated with the worst thing to ever happen. Like right. that was the first thing. So I have one regret and, and, and I do want, I feel bad because Bryson's sitting here, but I, I do want to add one thing. And, and this is like the biggest, not the biggest regret I have in my life, but a big regret, something I look back on. And kind of, it's one of those things where you kind of cringe. I had a buddy, Nate Roy at the time, a uh, good kid. Um, we, 9-11 happened. We got out of school and he was one of like the, the kids that lived with us. We lived in a small town, Bryson. And so all the kids, you know, you'd ride bikes around town and, and whatever. And I remember Nate Roy wanted to hang out. And my mom was like, no, Jory, you have to, you, you have to stay inside. And I was like, why? It's, it's nice out. It's not cold out yet. Like, it's September 11th. It wasn't quite cold out yet in New England. So I was like, what's wrong? Like, I, I want to go play on my bikes. And my mom was crying, like sobbing in our TV room. And she was like, Jory, now's just not, now's not the time to play. And I remember just being so frustrated, being like, why won't my mom let me play like outside with my friends? Like, what's the big deal? And when I look back on that and how short-sighted and like selfish it was, I, I like kind of cringe, but again, I was a child. So I had right. no understanding of just the, the sheer gravity of the situation. It's hard to comprehend those moments. Right. Especially at a young age. So, okay, we've, we've gone over, I, I mean, I don't think we need to go over the actual history of 9-11, but if, uh, if, if we can do some cliff notes, Bryson, what was sure. the occasion and why is there so much mystique about it? Why isn't it cut and dry, right? It should be cut and dry. It should be. It really it really should be. Um, I guess it kind of starts, and I know you said the cliff notes, but this kind of actually starts all the way back in 1978. Let's do it. During the Afghan-Soviet War. So historically, it is said that the U.S. government, CIA, funded um two separate groups of individuals to fight along with the um the afghani soldiers against the soviets mm -hmm. um osama bin laden his his family had a large amount of wealth uh, to my knowledge they still have a large amount of wealth and they had been funding a lot of it in the beginning um, they were so a saudi family correct? correct saudi family so naturally, they were one of the ones that funded the initial resistance against the Soviets. Mm -hmm. The CIA came in and contributed um, a large amount of money. In 1978, I believe it was $670,000 $670, that they, they um, donated to the campaign mm -hmm. to stop the Soviets. Because, of course, America loves a good fight with the Russians. They always now, have. What's interesting, tell me if you agree or disagree with this. Either of you can chime in. It is said, or I've heard this said, this was to be the Soviets' Vietnam, and we wanted to make it that way. So just Absolutely. the same way that we were pushed out of, of Vietnam, and it did not really end well for any side, um, the U.S. was kind of ashamed and had a chip on their shoulder about that, and we wanted to make this Russia's Vietnam. Is that we accurate? Absolutely did. Yes. Um... And, and to a point to where by 80, 1980, mid-80s, I think 87, uh, the U.S. government was donated $630 million a year oh to the resistance against the Soviets. This is 80s money, guys. This is 80s, 80s money. money. So if you take that $630 million in terms of today's money, it, it's somewhere in the trillions of dollars Gosh. that the United States government was spending to kind of curtail the Russians. Um, I mean, to, to the point where we even use it in U.S. propaganda, if you've ever seen uh, Rambo 3, they actually dedicate the movie to the Mujahideen soldiers mm -hmm. that the CIA was, was helping fund. So 
Osama bin Laden and Osama. It's okay. Um, Our media doesn't do that kind of propaganda anymore, guys. All right. So right. it's okay. We're civilized now. We're right. above that. Um, it had always been said that Osama bin Laden had been trained by the CIA, had been working with the CIA and have connections. And of course, it stands to reason that he did working with both of those groups during the Soviet Afghan war. So fast forward to, to a more 2000s, 9-11 territory. You have a very well-funded, very strategically trained uh, operative in Osama bin Laden, mm -hmm. trained by the United States CIA. Uh, again, none of that has been um, confirmed, uh, com completely confirmed right? Um, by our government or theirs. I just want to say someone... real quick, this is, I know we're getting into conspiracy theories. This is like the, the, this is like basic. This is the least outlandish thing that I think anyone right. would hear. Even people that would be like, oh, you're, you're a 9-11 conspiracy theorist. I don't want to hear from you. Um, if you told them that, I think that's kind of just commonly accepted as truth. Like, yeah, we funded them. We gave them training and tons of weapons and tons of money. And he was trained by the CIA. I think most people would just agree. Absolutely. And again, this was during Reagan's uh, terms, who, who of course, his VP was uh, George H.W. Bush, mm -hmm. the father. So you have kind of the history of the family as well, um, being in contact with Osama bin Laden and, and the characters in the Middle East during this time. But H.W. Bush, he he's no stranger to the CIA either. Correct. Cor I mean, correct. If you ever go into uh, JFK assassinations, even George H.W. had some implications during that as he was. Well, he was the director, wasn't he? For a time, he was the director, he was of, director the of the CIA for a time. He was also um, kind of inexplicably in Dallas the same time frame JFK was assassinated, and there's some conflict as to when George H. W. made contact with them. The whole, if you ever want to read about the Bush family, there's a great book called um, Family of Lies. Um, I, I don't remember the writer, but if you Google Family, we'll leave of a Lies, link in the description. On, It'll on be the Bush the family and, and so many connections that they had, not only with JFK, but also with um, the Reagan shooting. Um, the Bush family is actually friends, family friends of the son who shot Reagan. Um, and they were supposed to have dinner even that night, the night he shot Reagan. So there's a lot of different. And if you want to go deep with this, look up like the, the skull and bones and these secret skull societies. Bones, they're absolutely they're... This is all into Bryson. I hope you come. We're not ending the podcast here, but I just want this is normally what I say at the end of the podcast. I hope you come back to be a regular and talk about all of these things with us because there's like no, so much to unpack here. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is we're going to have to do like another installment, another few installments of, of just this topic because I think like it would do a disservice to this topic to just do a one and done. So for those of you listening or watching, don't worry, we're going to cover this over a length of time. But be so I, I'm, I, I apologize for interrupting. So, OK, so no, the Bushes no, no. were now in, in the late 70s. Yeah, late 70s, early 80s, uh, the Bush family, any any political dynasty obviously has ties with operatives all around the world, as well as whoever is in the sphere at that time. Mm -hmm. um, Henry Kissinger. Donald Rumsfeld, Cheney, of course, Reagan, all of those, the Bush family kind of goes through that entire um, generation, several generations of political uh, people. Wheeling people, dealing. conspirators, exact, absolutely. And you know, you know, I Smooth love a talkers. good con. I'm a oh, salesperson. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about, I'm all about the sale. Yeah. I, I respect the game. Close no matter time, what. Exactly. <laughs> Always be closing. Closing coffee is for closers. It's it's exactly. how it is. <laughs> it how it is. So fast forward. Years 2020, not 2020, 2000. Bush is in, inaugurated in January of 2020 uh, of 2000. It's okay. We have a bunch in, of 2020 conspiracies coming up too, though. I mean, I think the hard, big C is like the biggest. It's hard one to we say have. conspiracy and not follow with 2020. With 2020, yeah, yeah. yeah. So 2000, so, to be clear, 2000, 2000, Bush is president. Bush is president. 
10 days after his inauguration, he says his number one priority for his term is to stop uh, Saddam Hussein. Interesting. It, and it's it's well documented. CNN has videos. Fox has he wants videos. to liberate that oil, baby. He wants to liberate that oil. He may say he wants to liberate the people, but baby, is that oil? Is that oil? Which, the black gold. Is that black gold? Which, which, just to reference it to gold, is funny because the United States government did switch um, what backed the U.S. dollar from gold to oil, and mm -hmm. and naturally, you know, you want to kind of control it where it is. Right. So rule. Rule goal priority one of his first term was to take out Saddam Hussein. I just want Which, to say something real quick. To, absolutely. To, I'm sorry to make light of this stuff, but I saw this clip. It was clearly in the Middle East, somewhere in the desert. It was like a recent clip on Instagram. There's this group of kids just like filming this like sand dune and it's bubbling up with oil. And everyone in the comment section was like, what country is this? It needs democracy. <laughs> and right. Like, and like, that's all the top comments where people making democracy jokes, freedom jokes. And it's like, it's freedom right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, early 2000, Bush claims that eight months before 9 11, before the events of 9 11. So, <clears throat> preface that you already have kind of the, uh, the landscape built out mm -hmm. for what's going to happen. Days up to 9-11, you have multiple whistleblowers, Susan Lindau um, and Colleen Rowley, one from CIA, one from FBI, both having documentation that an attack could happen and okay. that it's, it's most likely coming from this region of the world and what it will pertain to and where the attack will be. Um, Susan Lindau is a little less um documented all all the proof she has but as far, far as colleen rowdy she states that she presented all of her documentation to her direct supervisor and her supervisor told her not to pursue it furthermore more um, all that documentation was supposed to be um, gone through by the fbi and the lawyer team for the fbi um, and sent to the doj department of justice and it mm -hmm. never was this was all before 9-11 so the thought that that they had an idea which which again is not uncommon historically either fdr and his administration also knew that the attack on pearl harbor was possible to happen mm. um, all this information can be found in another great documentary called um 9 11 the new pearl harbor which is really interesting as good. they as they combined both 9 11 and pearl harbor how they are similar, how they're different, but majority how they're similar and how the United States government, CIA, FBI can run co-ops that make it look like it's a foreign power or um, that the government allowed it to happen mm -hmm. uh, without stopping it when they obviously could have the, the power to stop it. Another large point of it is literally the day before, September 10th, Donald Rumsfeld, the Secretary of State at the time, I believe Secretary of State, he may have been Secretary of Defense of the time, says that there's a $2.3 trillion budget deficit within the Pentagon, um, that they have no, no true idea where the money has gone, what has happened to the money, huge misappropriation of funds, allegedly. That happens all the time. Happening, when you, you just You just misplace your few trillion dollars. It's yeah, like, you know. It happens to me. I mean, I don't know. It's like car guys, keys. But, right. Exactly. You know, you sit them down. You're patting you your 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 raincoat. You're like, man, oh, I left it in my other dockers. Exactly. It's in his other pants. Right. So he says that the day before uh, 9 11. But then, of course, we have the day of 9 11. We have George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, three, what would be chain of commands, all being unobtainable, unreachable. For the thir first 30 minutes of the attack. So hmm. you have the Pentagon, or you have a World Trade Center plane one, World Trade Center plane two, and the Pentagon all getting hit within the 30 minutes. Okay. Finally, you have them being able, the the fourth person in line, I cannot remember his name, um, that was actually able to scramble the jets. And then, of course, Cheney was in the bunker and was able to say, yeah, proceed. Right. And, and pursue the other plane. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. However, of course, that plane supposedly never got hit by the jets. Supposedly, the the flight of 93 was able to overthrow the cockpit and um, land the plane away from large metropolises. Um, It was always stated that it was supposed to hit the White House uh, and instead ended up in, in a field in Pennsylvania. Right. The conspiracy with that, of course, is that the debris from the plane was over one and a half miles long, where it should have been only several hundred yards right. from impact. It looks more like it got scrubbed out of the sky. It looks more like a yeah, one of the scrambler jets had struck it. But and of course, here's, here's before we go any further. This is one of the reasons this is so dang precarious because the story is like this is the freedom flight right they fought right. back they they were right. able to, to right and it's such a a sad but beautiful story that you don't want to sully it by right. by being like well maybe like some hornets came in and and took it down before it hit any uh large metropolises or or the white house and it sucks because you're going to get into some information and, and probabilities like like that mile long debris field and you think like okay like it could be probable that these planes did engage the the, the commercial jet and take it down which is a horrific decision th- th- to be made and i'm sure the pilots didn't relish it like i'm sure it it messed them up big time but you almost don't even want to entertain that because you don't want to disrespect the, the people involved, right? On all sides. And, and here's, here's the thing. This brings me to my first point that I wanted to talk about. When, whenever someone brought up, like, what was it? The Zeitgeist uh, film? Or, or, or the, no, 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 no. What was it? I'm getting my my Z names. Was it the Zapruder film or something? I, I, I there, there's a bunch of 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 stuff online that's come out since 9/11 about 9/11 truthing and all this. Whenever I would encounter it, I felt like this visceral anger and like disgust. Like, how dare you assume or even utter the fact that this was an inside job and that like our government would do this to its own people and this or that. And although I'm still at the point where I don't want to believe that now that I'm in my thirties, I'm like, okay, this, the government would totally like, they, they don't care about us and they totally would do this. So it's, right. it's, I'm not going to say that I am a nine 11 truther, but let's just say that from what I've experienced as now an adult, I'm like, if you think the government has your best interest in mind, that's not necessarily the case. But okay, so so I'm sorry, Bryson. But oh I no, absolutely. And that being said, I you know I don't doubt um, the people on Flight 93 didn't overthrow the hijackers. Mm-hmm. But I also don't put it out of the realm of possibility that when they did overthrow the hijackers, the people in charge had to shut it down and and make sure that it followed suit with their um right their storyline right and like you said with with the distance being what it was that's definitely a point of condition uh that i wouldn't want to assume but at the same time it's very hard not to and as you said the older you get the more you're like yeah i could see i could see a government doing that um whether it was intentional or not whether whether right. the initial um plan was that or not at some point anyone covers the tracks Mm -hmm. back to rumsfeld in the pentagon the third plane that did hit the pentagon happened to hit the west wing where um, all of the accounting was being done to find that 2.3 trillion dollars so it's a little um (laughs) happenstance that it were to happen to hit the exact location where all the counting was doing that was supposed to recover the 2.3 trillion dollars that was supposedly that lost little, that the dang day before. misplaced deficit right that little bit of funds and again there's there's 
hundreds of cameras on the Pentagon, and there still hasn't been one video that has surfaced of a plane actually hitting the Pentagon. Right. So I want to clarify anyone... something real quick. Um, from 2001 Absolutely. to 2006, he was Secretary of Defense. Defense, to, thank cl you. To clarify. Thank you. Which should have been the third in, in power in case of an attack like this. Mm -hmm. He would have been right behind Cheney, who would have been right behind Bush. But even, even Rumsfeld was uh, supposedly made unavailable for the first 30 minutes of the attack. Interesting. So it's questionable where everyone was during those 30 minutes. We know Bush was speaking to a class of children. Um, Reading the book. Cheney, right. Cheney was supposedly getting off of Air Force Two, um, landing in D.C., going to the White House, going into the bunker during all of this. And then Rumsfeld was mysteriously just not available for the first bit of the attack. Then, of course, you get to the hearings of the 9-11 Commission. Multiple sources, multiple people on the hearings thought that it was a fail from the beginning. There mm -hmm. were 15, 15 or 17 documents of the commission that um, was even made um, confiden confidential to them because it involved um, the 15 standards and practices or whatever not even that because it involved 15 citizens of saudi arabia 19 of the 15 terror 15 of the 19 terrorists were saudi arabian so anything that had to deal with saudi arabia was completely stricken from the commission obviously because the united states have always had such a tight-knit partnership with saudi arabia and the eau the the um, emirates Right. They've always had it to where we're very buddy buddy with them, even though they go far off a lot of um, human standards the United States supposedly stands for. Uh, exactly. Look the, that's, I mean, if that's... you look at the Geneva Convention, there's a lot of things that the um, Saudis don't practice that, that we staunchly say we support. Right. But if, if it's anything, any type of conflict with Saudi Arabia, the United States government backs off entirely. Um, and in off. this case, in this case, classified documents. Um, so how could a commission even come to a proper conclusion when the majority of the hijackers couldn't even be um, given any of the background information for them, anything pertaining to Saudi Arabia, uh, for them to make a conclusion? Right. Aside from that, the others were uh, several from the EAU, one was from Lebanon, one was from Egypt. None of them, ironically, was from uh, Iraq or Afghanistan which the United States then because it's almost like we were to. we were in like a 20 plus year conflict with those places it's it's, it's correct. Are, are, you must be incorrect Bryce I'm sorry we right. wouldn't go to war right. with a country that <laughs> right that had no uh, affiliation or support to the 911 it's almost tax. like we lost so many more lives in like a 20 plus year conflict are you check double greg double yeah. check his notes would you yeah yeah someone do a quick check on that um as to where it ended up I, I believe we're still in that war if i'm if i'm correct yeah it's 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 weird it's wow hmm. yeah and then of course you move on to the weapons of mass destruction uh that cheney claimed oh my uh, gosh Saddam wait Bryce, and now you're gonna tell me that they weren't there yeah Poppy you know it, what's Poppy funny cock. What's funny is, uh, in fact, they weren't there, and uh, that didn't really much stop us from from continuing what we were doing. Um, yeah. It's almost like so, we went harder too. We went super hard. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the first day when we bombed um, Iraq that first night, I'll never forget it. it. Truly, it looked like the Fourth of July on TV. Shock and awe, right? Operation Shock, shock and, awe. and awe. I remember yeah, seeing that footage, dude. The 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 subtle green tone of like the the night vision, and then seeing the the freaking sky lit up. And dude, I'll never forget. I was eating with my parents at, at our dinner table, and I and we were just some like blood red. I mean, we still are blood red Absolutely. Americans. And so I was there being like, <gasps> "Got him!" Yeah, and we were um, we went after. Oh yeah, because we're pissed off right like Absolutely. you did something to us we're gonna do worse to you that that it's like an eye for an eye right that's I, dude 
we I was so gung ho about like getting these mother effort back Absolutely. that like I didn't care and 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 again I was young so I'm sure a lot of the older yeah. people people that were like even more passionate they don't even care about the these nuanced discrepancies of like oh none of the people uh were, were from Iraq but were like leveling Iraq right. that doesn't matter because we're so angry that we just want to do something so absolutely yeah. I mean it was a great uniter of the country I will give it that for a time. Yeah. For a time. For a time. Yeah. It sure was. It sure was. I mean, you have weird things like, uh, like Bush is saying, you know, go out and shop. Like that's how you can fight terrorists is to boost the economy, go out and right. spend money, which was another wild thing to suggest. But at the same time, it did, it, it united the people regardless whether we knew who the enemy was or not. And at the time I would say that the majority of the United States government didn't much care uh, as opposed to borders if it was middle east it was middle east and they were all bad uh, at right. that time right and and like you said it led to um a level of racism for anyone from the middle east for years um, yeah ho- horrific i mean the, the 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 repercussions of this vastly you know it has bled into areas that you would not think possible and so not only was there a direct loss of life, there were these magnified prejudices, there were distrust of, of neighbors, people that that once got along. I remember I, I went to high school with this kid, Kevin Assad. I went to a private school for a time. So Greg doesn't know this guy, but um, this dude was uh, Lebanese, I believe, and really nice dude. And not that this matters, but I'm going to bring up skin tone real quick. The guy was sure. like whiter than me and he had blue mm-hmm. eyes. Okay. Uh, but then the last name, that right, last name, but that him. last name. Okay. After um, this happened for years after the conflict, uh, people were spray painting his garage door with like terrible, terrible pejoratives for right. like Middle Eastern people. And it's crazy because he wasn't Muslim. He not that it matters. Not not that like oh if he was Muslim it'd be okay. I'm just saying like he I'm, I'm pretty sure he was like a Christian Lebanese person. His religion doesn't really matter, but to to call him like an Islamic extremist or something like it that literally would it does not compute. That's not a thing. So it sucks that like you can be part of a community one day and just accept it and you're cool. Then some terrible atrocity happens and it's like, cool. Now we, now we hate you. Same, same thing happened during, during the, um, you know, internment camps with, with the Japanese Americans, like, Absolutely. Oh, you're, you're a perfectly fine member of the society. Pearl Harbor happens. Cool. Round up all the Japanese America. It's like, dude, like yeah. dude, we gotta be a little bit more nuanced here. Absolutely. And and you were from a place that was even more culture than I was in, in the middle of the country. Many of people that I knew had never even met anyone from the Middle East, at least to our knowledge. Yeah. So obviously anyone um, in my area thought everyone was terrorists if they right. had a, a similar name, came from a similar, similar place, anything like right. that. And I would assume that happened for the majority of the Midwest. I mean, the coastals have always been more cultured, more integrated, things like that. But the majority of the United States, I think they were all gung ho against anyone that was that could appear like they were from that region. Like, look at me now. I would right. have not been cool. Right. Not with the beard. Lose not the beard, you know, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. He might have evened out. Yeah, exactly. Right. What do you mean you're why? <laughs> right. So yeah, there's there's a lot of different levels of of questionable things that happen leading up to right 9/11 of course the day of that makes any person that can critically think wonder was this something that was done so the United States government could go to war in the Middle East and take as much oil as they could um take as much resource as they could change the power dynamic in the region as as we did all through the 60s 70s 80s in south america and through the middle east of mm-hmm. course why wouldn't they strike it a chance to do it as well 
for me, as far as did the United States plan it? I hope to God it wasn't planned. Right. Was it something that we allowed to happen? Like more so the followings of, of Pearl Harbor? Maybe. I would I hope to God that's more apt than not only did we allow it to happen, we helped set it up and put motions in place. Right. But again, you know, it's been 60 plus years since JFK's assassination and those documents still aren't declassified. So will we ever know? Probably not in our lifetimes. Obviously, if something is classified, it makes you wonder. Uh, there's got to be, be blamed somewhere on our side of the fence. Right. But who's to say? You know, it's interesting. My dad, so we went to D.C. My parents took us on like a family vacation so we could see the nation's capital. And uh, we were talking about presidents. You know, our, our parents were giving us a, a little course on an abbreviated course on, uh, you know, civics and everything. And uh, because they they don't teach civics anymore, guys, in public school, by the way. So, um, but anyway, they were talking about uh, JFK and how even back then, this, this must have been, gosh, this, this must have been like around 9-11 time or, or late 90s. They were talking about like, oh, yeah, you know, so one of the, the most formative experiences of my life and and i remember like exactly where i was like when it happened and what i felt when it happened and that got my dad into talking about all the the various potential um explanations for it about how you know lee harvey oswald was a patsy and the cia had reasons to to want um jfk gone and uh how the mob also did not like jfk and jfk was kind of a little bit uh loose with his personal morals and and with the ladies and everything and all of this and that and and i was like well will we ever will we ever find out and my dad said well the records are sealed for a certain period of time and i was like so when do we learn and my dad says not in my lifetime but in yours right and the crazy Hopefully. thing is I remember that made me feel sad because I was like, oh, what, what do you mean? Not and you're, you're not you'll but you'll be around I'll go live like forever. ever. <laughs> yeah. And then the crazy yeah. thing is this is is exactly that for us. Right. Like your kid, Bryson's going to ask you about that and when we'll get answers and you, that's literally the, the same but like no not in our lifetime and guess what we probably won't even get jfk in our lifetime so we won't right bummer but again you can probably suspect the cia had something to do with that <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and to touch on that very briefly one of the first things jfk wanted to do was dissemble the cia uh, when you say that against a huge, huge proponent of the United States government, they have some reason to want to stop it's you before that. Happens. Interesting, because I feel like they might not want to be disbanded. <laughs> right, right. Seems you know, like they might have the wherewithal to make sure you don't disband them. <laughs> yeah, they have uh, some connections, to say the least. Uh, but... It, to touch on that, I do think the CIA had more uh, involvement than the mob did. The mob may have had some. I mean, the mob did make a deal with Joe Kennedy that he wouldn't uh, pursue the mob. And then JFK turned around and made Bobby Kennedy the attorney general uh, and basically told him to go after the mob. So the mob wasn't very happy with JFK to begin with either. And then, but by no means was know... the CIA everyone in the Kennedy family ended up dying. So it's like sure did. Yeah, sure did. They, how that they, works. they taught them a bit of a lesson. Um, even even John F. Kennedy Jr., you know, that nothing has really oh, yeah. come out about that, but an experienced pilot goes over the ocean, mechanical failure, pilot failure, and it goes down, never to be found again. That's a bit suspicious, also, but I highly doubt there's any type of information to even make that worth a, a conversation. I remember but, reading something that they were like, oh, he got lost in the blue or some term where it's yeah. like when there's water uh, below you and then there's blue sky around you, pilots can get disoriented and they end up flying directly. 
I'm like, I, down I is up and up is down, and who knows? Yeah, but I'm like, how many barrel rolls is this? This guy's right. not doing like extreme G maneuvers in his little pond skipper. Like he's right. like, I don't know. I don't buy that. But absolutely. Anyway, and an interesting question to you though is, is a timeline issue. How much longer do you think it could be that things like this could happen? Because with technology these days. Yeah, I mean, even phones, the iPhone can record. So this is, this is the question, right? Because even in, right. in our show notes, uh, we, we have like an episode list. I put down, Greg, you've seen it. Uh, can serial killers exist in 2022? Exactly. And so the thing is, this with the Patriot Act and everything, and I don't know if you're going to touch upon all of that, but 9-11 literally did uh, like open the floodgates for this like police state that we live in and and I'm, I'm not trying to like get super duper political but the truth is you are being watched all the time like i don't think we can argue like that i'm, I'm not and we've coming we voted for it and we passed it right and, and and i'm not here being like some paranoid like they're 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 talking to me through my sink every time i turn my sink on they're they're like talking no but what i'm saying is if you don't think that there's people looking at the things you search, or if you don't think that that there are government organizations asking cable providers to see what people are, you know, what sites people are visiting and like they they'll just call it market research. If you don't think there's right. there's not three little three letter organizations in the government doing market research on the, the populace, then you're being a little silly because the truth is. Everything from going through customs, they actually don't even need your your passport anymore because what they do is they take a picture and because of facial recognition, your name comes up. So it, it's it's like they will say, yeah, we use this for expediency, right? It just makes the, the lines shorter. We can just blah, 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 blah. Okay, sure. So I guess you could argue there's some good things about it, right? Oh, I can use my face to unlock my phone. I don't got to use my thumbs to unlock my... That's so cool. Hey, I can do a puppy dog filter on Snapchat. This is fun. But are there also some potential real bad sides to this? Yeah, I would say yes, absolutely. Now... This is, uh, you asked me the question. I don't know if I can answer it because this is a question I'm asking myself. Can a serial killer exist when everything is monitored? Your search history, your where you are, um, like literally where you are, your phone's a GPS. Um, right. I don't know. So, so what is the time? How, how many more times can this happen? Can it happen in the modern era, 2022? I think a I serial mean, killer can exist in this because they can go with lack of technology. They cannot hmm. carry a phone. They cannot have a car that has GPS. Yeah, but on here's it. the they, thing: the victims do, though. The, the victims, victims do. do. This is true. And as long as that's dumped, whatever information they have, they can be taken to another location, and that could be done. But as far as the United States government any large entity doing things like this, that's what I think is going to be harder and harder. See, this is, now my brain's things. in a blender, dude, because <laughs> Greg, correct me. I I believe during, see, this is, oh my God. This is the problem of having everything you say recorded because people can be like, you just, uh, you just totally lied. <laughs> Um, no, but, he, but hear me well, out. That's true. I, I, I believe during our um, our moon landing denier part one podcast that we just filmed, I said one of the reasons that I that I'm not compelled to believe it was faked is because how the heck did they get everyone on the same page to be in on it and no one spilled the beans at all? Like we complain that the government can't like they can't get people out to fix the potholes locally. So how the heck can on like a federal level, they get everyone on the same page in lockstep to produce this lie that we went to the moon so well that the Soviets didn't even argue that we went. But then at the same I time, when I think you answered your own question in that because right. uh, 
granted, I think the moon landing, again, God, I hope it was real. In my heart of hearts, I believe it happened. Me uh, too. Neil and Buzz went up there. They yep. landed. They danced around. They stuck that flag <laughs> in the ground. It had a weird yeah. little sway to it. Whatever. It hit a dab and then <laughs> hit a dab. In my mind, that happened. But to your point, I completely agree that the entire United States government, everyone involved with it, would have lied and kept the lie to make the Russians think that we beat them. Because but, but hold on, it though. all comes down to being the How Russians. Come- Right, but but this is now we're getting into the moon landing episode, moon landing right. part two, guys. But here here's here's the thing: if Russia, because they weren't they weren't slouches at the time, they were very well, close. They were not. If they even even if they didn't think we lied about it, you'd think they would come out and be like, "They lied, they didn't go," but they didn't. So how the heck did we make such compelling things that our enemy? who would have had reason to call us out, didn't call us out at all. So, so what well, you're saying that's is... That's sign of the times. So he, lack but here, here's, of propaganda here's the scary ability thing, from though. Russia. Here's the scary thing, though. If you're making the argument that the government has the wherewithal to lie about something like that, and you're making the argument that the government can have... S- all of these people in their pockets then all the bad things that's happening that the government says like oh you know government the the wheels of the government turn slowly guys sorry like we're trying so hard oh sorry guys Ooh, gas is too expensive Mm. (laughs) sorry oopsies guys we're trying okay so to your point then if we're to use your belief then that means all the bad things that happen day to day, they were like purposefully not, like not helping us. Prevented. Is that, is, is that I, accurate? I, yeah, I would agree. The United States government has been capable and has done far things worse than anything we've talked about um, and, and worse than we could imagine. I believe they have the capacity and capability to do it. Okay, don't get into things that's going to get me assassinated now, Bryson. You better, you know, I mean, for anybody listening to our personal FBI agent, because I know there's at least one allocated to each person here. I just want it to be known. Patriot Act. I'm, I'm speaking of, <laughs> like you said, to get to to briefly touch on the Patriot Act. It was kind of the last um, big hurrah of the 9-11 conspiracies is is basically the redistribution of power, the largest redistribution of power the United States has ever seen with uh, the United States passing the Patriot Act, which entail basically the United States government can wiretap you, they can surveil you, they can do warrants, uh, procure warrants, All for the and sake enact of public warrants. safety all for the sake of public safety anywhere in the country. They could have a warrant against you in any other state, state you've never been to, and still enact it. Oh, they can do it outside the country, too. Absolutely. Basically stating that for the benefit of the United States uh, and its people and the safety of its people, they can monitor you um, as much as they want, to no extent. So, so yeah, I mean, the scope of of 9-11 and what it did is insurmountable when it comes to the United States people's freedom, um, as well as what actually could have happened uh, during 9-11. So, okay, we've gone over kind of our personal feelings on the matter. We've also gone over in depth um, I mean, geez, Bryce, and I asked for cliff notes. You gave us like a full <laughs> dissertation. Try to shorten it. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding dude. I'm kidding. I'm very thankful <laughs> that you did that. So now we know, okay, this is what happened on that infamous day. Right. What are the, like, you'd think, and I guess this is what, you know, the politicians would want us to believe, that we were attacked. Correct. Terrible thing happened. We're going to war. To, to fight these people that did this terrible thing to us. Right. Where do the conspiracies come in? I mean, I, I would assume, you know, the terrible people did these things to us, but we're fighting different terrible people. Right. You, 
I guess that's yeah, like even, the... right. Playing A, B, and C hit targets that uh, obviously mean a lot to the American people. Truly, in the Midwest, we didn't even know what the hell the World Trade Center was. Zero idea. He was like, trading worlds, man. Of the world? Yeah. We're like, where is that located? Freaking <laughs> the North Pole? We have no idea. <laughs> New York? Why would it be there if it's the World Trade Center? Anyway, Midwest, especially people of my age, zero idea. I bet people older than me in the Midwest had no idea. <laughs> New Sidebar, York, why would Midwest. I leave the country? Exactly. But yeah, why why would they attack ABC? Um, why would there be so many different issues with C, C being the Pentagon, um, even timelines. Why on earth would all of this happen to line up the way it did? Um, why would there be no video surveillance? We, we didn't even touch on, on temperatures, fuel burns and temperatures. Steel so this burns. is, so this is, yeah. There's so okay. many I wanted to caveats, talk about this. kind of the normal caveats to, to 9-11 conspiracy theory. This is the, the biggest one that you hear all the time it's almost become a meme is yeah is the steel beams the steel, steel beams. beams but you I've, I've heard so many things going both ways that i don't know and because i'm not i almost said an alchemist because i don't right. know because i'm not an alchemist i don't know how this metal is going to react to heat no the old timey um, provisioner right because i don't know enough about like these alloys or these steels right. or or temperature thermodynamics i'm not like educated enough to sure. speak one way or another so i kind of have to just pick someone that sounds compelling and be like okay we'll go with that and and i'm not either uh but if if you look at the statistics and information given carbon steel burns at 2600 2800 fahrenheit Mm -hmm. uh, stainless steel burns at 2750 degrees fahrenheit mm -hmm. jet fuel burns from 800 to 1500 degrees fahrenheit so just the math wise if you look all of that information jet fuel does not burn high enough to melt steel regardless of whatever steel the world trade center was constructed in so here's my question and this is not to to be disrespectful but do you think that the, all those technicalities kind of don't mean anything once a plane hits a build like because i'm sure like that's kind of where i'm at i'm like yeah Absolutely. there's all this like all these numbers thrown around and temperatures thrown around but i'm sure that these buildings weren't constructed with to the, withstand a to, 747 right. hitting them absolutely right. let alone two 747s right. so it's like well one on one on each but One yeah. on each, sure. Yeah, yeah. But so, absolutely. The caveat to that is how they fell. You're so when you see the videos, the the, the perfect the towers. collapsing in on itself. Absolutely. With the, with the people. I know you're the you're you're the resident expert here, but another thing I hear all the time are the, the pre-charges. You see pre-explosions going down, and, and that's proof that the CIA put like like C4 on each level or something. And, and Right. It's like, ah, which, I, which even then that could have been deep faked. You could have made it look like things were exploding um, in any video you see, but mm -hmm. to say that the building didn't start falling uh, from top to where the plane hit, uh, like, like if a plane were to weaken the structure above it, above it would mm -hmm. fall first. And then the weight of all of that collapsing would then take down the rest of the tower. That wasn't how either tower fell. Um, all the videos show the towers falling from the bottom all the way up, kind of just completely uh, collapsing row one, two, three, all the way all. So ascending. from the ground up. From the ground up. And what's um, the common, the videos, what's the consensus as to why? Is, is the would, why just, well, a plane hit it? I, I wouldn't imagine a plane would do that. Again, I'm not a structural engineer. I'm not an right. alchemist, as you say. Um, so I'm just, an idiot, guys. So just don't listen same, to anything I say. So. Same. I am too. I am the smartest a person here is Greg, and he doesn't talk no. very often. So. <laughs> As to why he's the smartest. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we wouldn't have a show if we were. <laughs> so. 
can't do it without Greg. Greg is it. <laughs> yeah. Greg is the quiet show. But here's the thing. You also couldn't do it without me. So you guys have to deal with the stupid. That's true. The, that's, the... <laughs> that's entertaining. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, that's what it's a song and for. dance. We are both song and dance. Greg keeps it all together. <laughs> but, but yeah, if I were to guess, I would assume it would fall where the plane entered above it falling and Top then the rest down. of it below it. That exactly. makes sense to me. In, instead of how all the videos show it falling it does make but it the look thing like, is, there is was like when you argue this people get so angry because it's like yeah you didn't see two planes hit hit like right who cares how it felt it got they got leveled by planes and and that's kind of the camp that i've been in right because it's like yeah i'm not an architect i'm not a structural engineer but i feel like they, there weren't provisions when these were being constructed it's like yeah well if a plane hits it then it's gonna it's like no they, all bets they are just, off <laughs> right exactly so i don't right. know enough to to right. actually go one way or the other however what you just said is is kind of where i am at where it's like if something hit it higher up you would expect it to fall from top to, down to That's give the, there right right, right. And then well, follow know. suit below. I don't know either. Um, but yeah, it, it looks as if something happened at the base of the structure that took it down from bottom top. Okay. As opposed to weight building from the plane, weakening either the structure or the floors above it and mm -hmm. crashing top down. Okay. But again, like you said, that is that is 101 conspiracy theory of 9-11. Um, right. That's that's why I led with all the other presenting facts as to what. Honestly, uh, I think the the craziest one that you've brought up is is, is uh, the discrepancy in funding in the budget. Yeah, that's that's like the big that is. I feel like we should be focusing more on that. Yeah, and it's, and like I said, Rumsfeld announced that uh, September tenth, two thousand one, the day, and then right where they attack. were they were gonna do accounting. That's where it gets right. hit in the Pentagon. That's the wing that was destroyed. And that discrepancy never came back up. We never went back to find what all that $2.3 trillion was lost on. Interesting. So we've, we've, okay, so we've mentioned that, which I think is the most damning. We've mentioned right. the fact that like we were, we were attacked by one entity and then we invaded a, a totally different one completely different incident. um we've covered the steel beams what's this i hear about a separate building that also took damage that shouldn't have there's another there's another world trade center building um that also uh what's i don't want to get the number wrong it goes by another number designation jamie pull that oh, up building number yeah. seven yeah building number seven. <laughs> greg is my jamie <laughs> yeah building number seven <laughs> jamie vernon in the house <laughs> nunzi just call me nunzi yeah building number seven so what's the deal with this because that's like you cannot go from steel beams without also hearing about world trade center seven like right the, and and but truly, I cannot speak uh, to the incidents that happened with building number seven. Again, there are plenty of conspiracies surrounding it as well, uh, but I've more so focused around the framework as to the events leading up to it, why it happened, and the events following. It's interesting because we, we mentioned serial killers, right? And right. one thing that is hilarious, sad, disgusting, frustrating, but also totally believable is the government, if you look at how they've caught some terrible people, like if you look at how the feds have caught some terrible, terrible criminals like throughout history, it's been because of like tax fraud and like money stuff. And so th like it's crazy because there's people with, with like atrocious like criminal records and like rap sheets like with heinous acts 
Yeah. And the government doesn't do anything, but the second you F with their money, they, they come full force. Absolutely. Public and, enemy number one, the very first, Al Capone, tax evasion. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter how many people he had killed. Doesn't matter, like, yeah, it's 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 the money. You mess with the government's get money. You for the dollars. They don't get the cut. They come after you. And so what's interesting is we look at this where there was a, a budget discrepancy of, you said the trillions? 2.3 trillion. Okay. And they don't do anything about it. Yeah. It's kind of weird because you'd think that the government would want to find that. By the way, uh, Greg, I just gave you permission um, to um, share screen. I know I, I, uh, I should have handled that before. But so if you could pull something up about uh, building number seven, because that's that's another thing that that people always bring up. I don't know if it collapsed or if part of it collapsed or if it, it took damage in I... some way. If I remember correctly, part of it was damaged, but not enough to support what happened with the other two buildings. Like it should have been damaged more if what they said happened exactly how it happened. Okay, what are we looking at here? We have a Wikipedia open. Um, building seven, sorry. Let me see. Okay, World Trade Center. Okay, seven World Trade Center. Um, the original structure, part of the original World, World Trade Center. Uh, was completed in 1987 and was destroyed on September 11th. Right. Um, both buildings are 47. No, no, no. Is this, this might not be the right. Well, there's the collapse down here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right here. This is what I pulled. I had pulled up before. Yeah. There were no casualties associated with the collapse. NIST, who is the National Institute of Science and Technology, I believe. They're the people that do atomic um, timekeeping radio signals uh, found no evidence to support conspiracy theories such as the collapse being the result of explosives. It found that combination of factors, including physical damage and yada, 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 chain reaction collapse. So, but again, like NIST is a government organization. So like, can we believe it? Like that's, that's right. like, yeah, it, it's all of this gets so crazy because at the end of the day, we are accusing the people who bring us the information of the ones perpetrating the atrocity. Do you know what I mean? Right. And another entity of the same is saying nothing to see. Right. Everything's fine. So if, to use a term uh, that our last guest brought up during the moon landing stuff, he was like, gun to your head, Jory. What do you believe? And I was like, well, I, I haven't been compelled that we didn't go yet. It, it, it wasn't sure. for lack of effort. He brought up some compelling stuff. It wasn't compelling enough. So I'm going to ask you, you like got to make a decision. Was this an inside job? Or not what you want to believe. What do you believe? I believe this was definitely an inside job by the United States government to perpetuate a war in the Middle East. What would be in it for them besides oil, oil, money, power, and every and, and everything else? That yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's enough to, to, to okay it with them. So you mean creating a power vacuum that would uh, have a bunch of other warlords battle for that area, thus creating more enemies for us to fight and perpetuate a long multi-decade war? I sure do. You think that they would do that? I do. And I, I do because the only thing that has ever gotten the United States out of financial hardship, uh, out of recession, out of Great Depression has been war. Uh, the perpetuation of war has been a money maker for almost a century for the United States government. That's and kind I, of I believe not they'll cool to hear it. right now because we're on like the cusp <laughs> of a recession and we're also on the cusp of like a, a war. It's almost Ukraine, like Russia. It's almost like what you're saying is too real right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, you know, boy. you said gun to your head. I, I don't. It, by no means do I want it to be true. Do I want to believe that the United States government does do this? But 
with the facts presented, I can't help but think that there is some correlation, if not a direct reason as to why the events of 9-11 have taken place and, and the events following um, have resulted in the way they have. So I've brought up what is most compelling to me, the, the, the budget discrepancy and the fact that that was the wing that got destroyed on the Pentagon. But what, what do you think, or do you think it's all of it together, um, is the most compelling thing to you that led you to believe, or, or that led you to say, yes, definitely, it was an inside job. Like, what was the one bit of information that was like, because I'm literally, I can just pull that one thing and be like, yep, that's, that is like too, that is like too perfect. That is too perfect. Like, because of that right there, that kind of sways where I am feeling about this to, to, to being more towards inside job. Um, but what, what facet for you was like the most compelling? I would say just the entire backstory of, mm. of the Mujahideen in the United States government in the late 70s, early 80s, Soviet-Afghan war, building the relationship with Osama bin Laden, um, allegedly, uh, and the groups that he was a part of that would have led to a culmination of the United States government worth working with Osama bin Laden to pull off such a feat. Um, to then perpetuate war in the Middle East. Because again, if we had gone after the people we thought who had attacked us, it would have been Osama bin Laden initially. And it wasn't. It was Saddam Hussein, uh, the Iraqi government, uh, and the Afghani government. And again, that led to us controlling more oil, uh, which mm-hmm. in turn controlled more money, uh, more resources in the Middle East more control overall in the Middle East, and then dealing with Osama bin Laden afterwards. Uh, because, of course, with any good conspiracy, you need a scapegoat. Um, and after we'd gotten uh, Saddam taken care of uh, and started our our um, ploy against them, the necessary term was to then go after the scapegoat, which was Osama right. bin Laden. And, of, of course, it took us years. Mm-hmm to do but again if you look at who did it you know it it led with bush and ended with um obama it was both sides of the aisle something that again would reunite the country red Mm -hmm. and blue both going after the same baddie Mm -hmm. um so it to me it makes sense the whole way through who started it who finished it all the reasons in between and so where where are we at now i mean we feel it right like we're living it but in your opinion in your assessment how has this played out assuming this is this or excuse me assuming this was an inside job what has the government reaped and and how has it benefited them in the world that we live in today i think the biggest thing it reaped was the american people being a hundred percent behind the united states government and military um, our military spending has gone up significantly since 9 11 mm. to where I think we spend $600 trillion a year uh, in, in military spending. And I know a lot of that is, you know, maintaining bases around the world, of mm-hmm. course, funding the, the active duty um, mm-hmm. soldiers, all, all of our um, branches of military. But it is also led to the biggest redistribution of wealth from American citizens to the United States government in any known period of time, to the point where we spend more than I believe now it's the next 12 countries combined on military spending. Um, And again, if if that is to counter our rivals, uh, be ahead of the Chinese, be ahead of the Russians, I, th- I think all of it plays into it, um, but okay, I do so believe. Greg just pulled up. United States spent seven hundred fifty-four billion on national defense in twenty twenty-one fiscal year, and I believe That's... that is the discretionary budget. If you look at the full budget, I believe it is in the yeah, trillions. Yeah. It, it it may be the seven hundred and forty billion, but again, it should be more than the next dozen countries, if not more, combined. An annual spending of defense 
And I believe that's a direct result of the attack of 9 11. Um, yeah. Which, you know, if, if you're American, it is good for us in a sense because we stay on top, even though we're not the leading economic power, really, in the world. Um, you know, we're just currently kind of uh, king of the hill. And as long as we stay king of the hill, the United States should be safe from, from do you think, foreign enemies. Do you think you can be a patriot? And and still hold these beliefs that the government perpetrated this or would you argue that 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 like this is what a patriot would believe it'd be hard it'd be hard to because you would assume a true patriot would go um, for the benefit of the of the republic more than the few so in the mind of a true patriot it could be argued that the loss of the 2,600, 2,700, how many people died during 9-11 is worth the safety of the 330 million people that live in the United States. But what States. if I rebutted, I'm almost taking your position here, but but I would rebut by saying this. I think being patriotic could be the love of your country, not necessarily the love of your government. I absolutely agree with that. And so but it's hard to your country is your people. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, and to be clear, that's what I struggled with growing up in this like post 9 11 world was I don't want to believe these conspiracies because if I believe these conspiracies, I'm, I'm being like anti American. I'm like not being a patriot. And I think it was designed that way. I think the propaganda surrounding it was designed that way um, to make any good American believe that. Uh, and have that kind of inner turmoil where they would rather, you know, back the U.S. government than think any type of conspiracy was possible. Right. Uh, but that being yeah. said, power comes yeah. in all ways. <laughs> and 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 I guess to finish this up, I'm going to say, regardless of who did it, it's, it is so effed up. It is so oh, effed up. It's a complete like, atrocity. Is, yeah. Probably One the worst the thing that, that's, that's happened in my of life. our lifetimes. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, to uh, to follow your podcast, it is one of the things that most definitely keeps me up some nights yeah. is, is wondering this um, and thinking all the different things, you know, is this for the best for the country? Is this something we did? Is this something that needed to happen? You know, A through Z. Yeah, but you think of like, I don't know, uh, it, it's it's hard to talk about this and not get political, but like, you just think of like i'm i'm as gung-ho pro-america as the next guy but you think about how many young dudes that we shipped out to these countries to to get messed up if not killed and yeah and, and you think or what the catalyst themselves. was right and then they come home and and they 20 end up 26 or 27 veterans a day a day kill themselves um and so, so that's what I was getting at with these things bleeding into areas that, that doesn't just stop. Like, one, like we okay, we got Saddam Hussein, we got Osama bin Laden. That does it. it this isn't done years ago. Yeah, we're still right. here. Right. So it, it's yeah. it's this is terrible. But yes. I mean, and, eye opening and. To think- and and to think the people in power still tell themselves or could tell themselves, arguably could tell themselves that these soldiers that still are taking their own lives, 26 to 27 a day, um, is that they're dying for their country. And I fully believe that, you know, majority of those people in those positions believe that. And again, believe that it's still for the good of the Republic, for the good of the 30, 330 million people living in the United States. It's, yeah, it becomes sick when you play numbers games like that. Right, right. With lives. But at the same time, you can understand how the argument could be made. You know, you might be able to argue that it was for the good of the Republic when, you know, things are going good in the Republic. Right. But you look at where we are now in 2022 and things have not been ever more divisive or divided things haven't been this like is true. 
like it's it's really sickening to be like well yeah no you're right this 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 loss of life it was for the good of the republic the republic isn't doing that great right now so it's it's well, it's best to decide whether it was good for the republic at the time or not the old trope is that when america falls it will be as a result of its own demise just Much like, like every Rome, every yeah every yep, great every, civilization right it's been a demise of their own making right um why wouldn't we end that way the question is you know when will we end if will it end will it drag on is it going to end in some very boring very dull way uh because i don't think it's going to completely collapse like rome um right i more see a, a vision of wall i want like pompeii you know pompeii would like, be great yeah problem is we don't have a big enough volcano in the continental Dang. u.s to do us in i think it'll be more like wally where we're all quite oh oversized <laughs> on a yacht <laughs> freaking uh, prisons and we in take our ourselves own out body. that fun way yeah. Yeah. yeah we eat ourselves to coronary artery failure <laughs> hell yeah i'm there bro <laughs> hell hell yeah okay um, greg greg where are you on this where are you on this like on what Inside. Oh, and everything. Sorry, sorry. Yes, inside for Where sure. Where have you been, sir? No, no. I was like, I thought you were talking about looking yeah, up queuing something. you up. No, 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 no. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's like I said, like from that day on, horrific is just like that word that stuck with me. You know, it's like the worst day I could ever remember, and it's going to stick with us for the rest of our lives, just like some of these 100%. other events. So, um. I don't obviously want to think it's an inside job because I think that just leads to opening up this huge other can of worms, which is already open in my head. But because we have to no. confront it, if it, yeah, if we, like, yeah, and that's the thing. It's it's that's going to keep us up at night a lot more than this, like because right. it's you know this is going to take us into the future and what our mm -hmm. future actually mm -hmm. holds. So yeah, you know, I think this is just a conversation that we just need to keep having. You know, I can't really mm -hmm. pick a side right now, but right. obviously I want to. I want to believe it's not true. And it'll I haven't, be hard to got sweet yet. Yeah. It'll be oh, something yeah. you can't pick a side for, for decades to come until oh, yeah. any information is released. Right. Yeah. And but I'm still connecting that... dots like every every Absolutely. day. Absolutely. And 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 here's the thing. I say this I've said this like during all of our recordings lately. Um, this isn't really supposed to be a structured debate. I'm not trying to do these to see like which side is like which side wins. Like, do the conspiracy theorists win or do the believers win or, or like whatever? Um, it's more so to show that like number one, not all people that believe in conspiracy theories are like weirdos. And then also, um, sometimes lines are blurred. Not everything is super duper black or white. And then also that the only way to get to the bottom of anything one way or the other is to have the conversations. Right. And so that's what I'm aiming to do with this podcast. Um, Bryson, at the end of each of my podcasts, I ask our guest to give us some advice. So what would you leave? If this is the last recording you ever make. What's some advice? Well, and and you it takes me out too. No, it doesn't have to do with 9-11 even. It doesn't necessarily <laughs> have to do with 9-11. What's some advice that, that you would like to, to leave us with today? Uh, well, as you said at the top of the hour, uh, me following you and your channel for a long time, I would go with, with the jewelry special, uh, you know, be happy, stay healthy, be kind to one another, tell someone you love them, the whole thing, be good to one another because it's a, it's a, it's a tough thing getting through, uh, and I don't think it'll get any easier. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, Bryson, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Again, we're going to have you on um, probably to talk about this some more, but also because I know that we're going to get a ton of comments about this, which is oh, going to open yeah. up some other things to talk thank about. Thank God so no one knows me. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, so yeah, we're gonna we're absolutely gonna have to do a part two with you. Um and yeah, hopefully we can talk about some other conspiracy theories or just some other topics. I know that you're into cars, you're into watches, you're into absolutely. real estate business. So we have a lot of lot in common. And um, yeah, I'd love to have you on again. I'd be honored. Thank you. And uh Thanks, Greg, guys. as always, great show. Thanks, brother. Thanks, guys. Guys, um, again, 
listening to the podcast. Uh, we're getting it on Google and Apple Podcasts as well. Right now, you can find it on Spotify and Anchor. Um, by the time you listen to this, though, it might be everywhere. Uh, and yeah, check us out on YouTube. If you're not watching us, but you want to see this, guess what? It's filmed. Things that keep me up at night YouTube channel. Um, I don't know if you can hear my cats. They're freaking out in the background because I have my door closed. Um, but that is Link. So he wants to make an appearance. Um, if you want to see more of me elsewhere talking about watches check out the time teller channel if you like cars check out t3 time to drive check me out on instagram at the simple consultant and uh yeah support us on patreon because right now these podcasts are not monetized so um it costs us money to produce because we have to get this stuff edited and um we're not really making any money off of it so if you want to support us check us out on patreon really do pre appreciate it links in the description below stay happy stay healthy stay blessed i will catch you on the next one all right guys